the stinging nettle. It's one of the first plants that we would have been introduced to in our lifetime. And as children, many of us would have had a run in with this plant and possibly it may have brought some tears too. But the humble stinging nettle has some really beneficial properties. In this episode, I'm going to take you through some of the uses of stinging nettles so that you look upon this weed in a totally different way. I'm Tony O'Neill and this is Simplify Gardening where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. If you want that perfect garden to relax in or just want to grow your own nutrient dense foods, start now by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon. Then click all to be notified each time I release new content just like this. You may have come across stinging nettles in your garden or in the hedgerows when you're on family walks. And even if you don't know what this plant is, just a mere brush against it and you will know exactly what this plant is. These are amazing plants. They have loads of benefits, but they also have a few disadvantages too. So before I go into the uses for this plant, I'm going to cover the disadvantages. Nettles have two distinct disadvantages. And the first of these is that they sting. Now they have fine hairs up and down the stems and on the leaves. And these are called trichomes. Now they're like hypodermic needles and they can pierce the skin very easily. Now these were developed by the plant to stop herbivores from eating them. They contain histamines, acetylchlorine, serotonin and formic acids. And it's the histamines that cause the initial reactions when you're stung. You may have heard serotonin being named the happy chemical, but in this instance, it acts as an irritant. And when you rub the infected area, it drives that into the skin further, causing it to itch and to swell up more. And then once you drive that in further, formic acids, which is another part of the chemical of this concoction, actually causes the burn of that sting. Now, as a child, you may have had a parent grab handfuls of dock leaves and start rubbing the infected area. Now, there is scientific evidence to back this data up because dock leaves, they contain antihistamines and rubbing antihistamines on the infected area can reduce the symptoms from the sting. And the second disadvantage to nettles is that they can become invasive. Not only do they have a root system, much like a fishing net that pushes out into all of the soils, but they also produce large volumes of seed as well. And when these get taken off into the wind and touch moist soil, they germinate almost instantly. We now know about the disadvantages of this plant, but now let's take a look at what it can do for us and the reason behind this video in the first place. Stinging nettles, they have loads of benefits for the gardener and some of those include that they can be turned into a fertilizer first off. You can feed all of your plants with this and it's a free resource. The next thing is that they have lots of health benefits when consumed. They can be used in the kitchen and they bring in loads of beneficial insects into the garden. So let's take a look at some of these in more detail. Nettles make the perfect fertilizer in the garden because they contain chlorophyll, nitrogen, potassium, iron, zinc, magnesium, and even calcium. And on top of this, they also contain vitamins A, B1, B5, C, D, E, and K. And because of all of these vitamins and all the minerals that they contain, they make perfect feeds for the garden. To make feed from nettles, it's very easy. It's called nettle tea. And all you do is cut the leaves off the nettles and you place them into a container, a bucket that uh, you jam the leaves into. And then you fill it to the surface with water and put a lid on it. And you put this by and leave it for around six weeks. And the resulting liquid is called nettle tea. Now, the reason you would put this out of the way is because as nettles break down, they absolutely stink. And this is a god awful smell. So you wouldn't want to use this for any of your indoor plants, only use it outdoors. After four to six weeks, the tea will be ready to use as a fertilizer for your plants at home. 
And I'm gonna give you some tips now so that you get the very best results for your plants when you're using it as a fertilizer. Number one, when you're collecting the leaves, before you add the water to make the tea, bruise those leaves because this will greatly speed up the rotting down process. Number two, this is fantastic fertilizer for all plants that love nitrogen. So any leafy crops it can be used for. It's really, really good. When you're actually making the fertilizer to water, this is number three tip, then you should water it down about 10 parts to one part. So 10 parts water, one part tea. And the last tip I'm going to give you here is if you're using it to water, plants that either fruit or flower then use them in the early stages of life because this is when they're putting out the greenery and everything else but as soon as they start going into flowering or fruiting you want to switch over to a different type of feed that is high in potash something like comfrey Nettles can be used in the kitchen too. They make wonderful meals and drinks. And all of those vitamins and minerals that we spoke about earlier on in the video, well, now they're in your diet also. So that can only be a good thing for you. Although not used so much in the kitchen these days, they used to be very popular in times gone past, right the way back to ancient Roman times. And they're even used now on everything from nettle gnocchi right the way through to pizza toppings. And you can even make your own infusion and make your own green teas to drink at home. And did you know that nettles contain four times more vitamin C gram for gram than oranges do? So if you're looking to increase the uptake of vitamin C in your diet and you want to do it naturally, well, nettles are a good choice. And stinging nettles have been studied huge amounts over the last 10 years. A simple search on Google Scholar will show you study after study after study about all the health benefits that they've been able to associate to stinging nettles. And some of them are as follows. Number one, it can help to control blood sugar levels. Number two, it also can be used as a treatment for hay fever and help control the symptoms of hay fever. Number three, it can also be used as a flush to clear out the urinary tract. Number four, it contains anti-inflammatory properties, so it can help with arthritis. And number five, it can help with gout, anemia, and tendonitis. Now, I'm not saying that stinging nettles are a wonder plant. But I do believe that nature has all the answers and with all the studies that are being performed and all the benefits that they are finding around stinging nettles, then I think it's about time that we as human beings cut this humble weed a little bit of slack. Stinging nettles are also a favorite for uh, beneficial insects in the garden and these are all predatory insects so they help control the pest species so finding an area to grow these in your garden can really make the difference to you and controlling the pest species the more we can work with nature the finer the balance that's achieved and the easier it is for the gardener in the long haul so it's really important to be able to bring in these insects. Now, a recent study found uh, in three test areas that areas that contain nettles were much higher in beneficial insects. And that study went on to say that these beneficial insects, the highest numbers were found in June and July, which is perfect because this is the exact time that the pest species like aphids, mealybugs, and uh, white fly, black fly, things like this are at high numbers in the garden. And what actually brought in the predatory species was the pollen and the flowers of the nettles. So it's really important to have them and bring in the predatory species to the garden. So you should consider allowing the stinging nettles to flower but a good tactic would be to remove the flowers before it produces a seed head. And this will then bring in all those predatory insects. Now, the study then went on to further elaborate on this a little, and they tested three areas of nettles, approximately 300 square feet each. And in those areas, they collected predatory insects, approximately two to 400 predatory insects per 300 
uh, square foot area. So it goes to show just how many insects can be pulled into this area. Now the types of insects that were caught were lace wings, ladybird beetles, predatory tree bugs, predaceous flies, brachnoid wasps, parasitic wasps, and all sorts of native bees. Now, we all know how many aphids that lace wings and ladybirds can eat in one sitting. So by allowing yourself to grow some nettles in the garden or even in a container can really help bring in these predatory insects, which will help you in the garden also. Now, who would have thought that the humble stinging nettle we ate it so much as kids could be so beneficial to us? I think it's about time, especially in this day and age, that we look about what nature is trying to show us. If you found value in this video, you can subscribe here. And if you want to learn more ways in which to control the pest species in your garden, then this is the next video that you should watch. I'm Tony O'Neill. This is Simplify Gardening, where I show you how to garden in a simpler way. Remember, folks, you reap what you sow, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.